Boston fans, welcome back to another episode of Celtics Catch-Up. I'm your host, Vinny Carbone. And I'm Brady Levinson. And today is our fourth episode. Oh. And the Celtics <laughs> are 4-0 in the season. And we are on pace to go 82-0, Brady. 82-0. Let's get started. Good ball fake. One more. Tatum! Oh, he caught one! All right, Brady. One player who's really impressed me over these last four games has been the bald man himself, Derek White. Mm -hmm. He's averaging around 16 points these last four, last four games, including a 28-point, six-rebound, and three-block game against the Heats. He was a huge factor in us winning that game. What do you think is the reason that he is going to be such a versatile part of the Celtics this year? Well, it seems like, I mean, he's, obviously he's been good the past few seasons, but who knows, maybe this is the best Derek White we've seen yet. He might find, be hitting the peak of his prime right now. Mm -hmm. He is getting more minutes. Um, he only had 28 minutes per game last year. He had 36 against the Heat, 31 against the Knicks. So early on, we're definitely seeing more playing time for him. I mean, it's hard to tell what exactly is going better for him besides just the overall production and, like, what, but... Overall, he is he's better than he was last year. He's getting more opportunities, and he's making the most of it. Yeah, and you spoke about minutes, Brady, and I think that's a big thing in the first few games of the season. I know a lot of teams are going to be more cautious playing their better players, but in the two blowout games we saw this week against, uh, against the Wizards and against the Pacers, yep. Jason Tatum only played three quarters. He did not see a minute in the fourth quarters of both of those games, yep. but he still averaged... 30 points a game in the first four games. That is yep. unreal. How do you think the Celtics will implement winning these blowout games and these close games throughout the season with players playing different minutes than expected? Well, in blowout games like we saw, I mean, obviously they're gonna, they aren't going to play the starter all the way. No starter. In last night's game against the Pacers, no starter played more than 27 minutes, True. which is barely half the game. And so, obviously in those blowout wins, they're not going to play the starters. The bench needs to show up. And last night they did. I guess the Wizards, I mean, we were up by 30 at times in that game. And we only, lost, we only won that game by 19 points. Last night, we were up big. We won the game by 51. Yeah, unreal. So in those games, obviously the bench has to show up, and they did. And we just got to keep our foot on the gas. And in close games, it's the same way. Like, that opening night against the Knicks, we... We had the lead for that entire game mm -hmm. until like four minutes ago in the fourth quarter. We did because we kind of just we kind of let up for a little bit, and luckily we got away with it. But we really just need we need to push the whole game, whether it's a blowout or if it's a close game. Yeah, and in those close games, you're really looking to one of the five or six main players in the Celtics roster to you know push you push mm -hmm. you over the edge. And sometimes it's Jason Tatum, sometimes it's Jalen Brown, sometimes it's Kenny Por Porzingis, yeah. sometimes it's going to be Derek White. We have all those options, but our two main options all of last year and some games this year are Jalen Brown and Jason Tatum, who have established themselves as two or one of the best duos in the entire NBA. Brady, do you think they have the the top spot of the best NBA duo in the league? It's tough. I mean... Obviously, as Celtics fans, we're going to think so. True. We're true. biased. We're biased, yep. But, I mean, they are 100% up there. At least Top five, at least. I mean, there, obviously, there's so many other duos out there. you got Giannis and Dame, Kawhi and Paul George, and they just added James Harden, too, but mm -hmm. that remains to be seen. Jokic and Murray. I mean, you have a ton of duos out there. JV and JT are definitely up there, but, you know, there's always that obstacle of winning a ring. Mm -hmm. And so, I think if they can win a ring... This year especially, they can cement themselves as the best duo, but I still think they have more to prove. True, and winning a ring, that goes great with what I wanted to bring up next, which is the Kobe and Shaq duo. They both yep. averaged 30 when they won three rings together. I know Jalen Brown hasn't really hit that 30-point marker yet, but if he does, do you think there's a possibility we can get a couple rings if we get two 30-point scores on the same team? Absolutely, and even even more than two 30-point scores, our starting lineup this year, anyone has the ability to drop 30 points on any given night. That we saw true. Porzingis do it on opening night. 
Derek White has gotten close. Drew Holiday hasn't got there yet, I don't think, but he, he could do it too. And obviously JT and JB have done it numerous, numerous times, times in their careers. Yep. And so and that's just, it's dangerous. Our offense, I mean, obviously last night we put up 155 points, second most in franchise history, it's but crazy. our offense looks scary. And I think the numbers, are, honestly, they could be down this year for JT and JB a little bit just because all the offensive workload is not options. They're, it's not all on them anymore, but I think it's a good thing. Mm-hmm. So even though the stats might not be up there, this starting lineup is dangerous. Yep, and again, that starting lineup is dangerous. We mentioned a couple episodes ago how the bench needs to add yep. things to that starting lineup. And Brady, what are your thoughts on how the bench played in this last game? Oh, I am thrilled. I am thrilled. They put up 63 points. I mean, we look back, they had 12 yeah. in that first game. They, I mean, obviously they got a lot more playing time True. last night because it was a blowout. But mm-hmm. still, 63 of 155, over a third of our points, is huge. We finally saw Peyton Pritchard kind of break out a little bit. He had 50 points. Sam Hauser looked amazing shooting beyond the arc. He, he had 17 points. Even Delano Banton had 11 points. Like, and I think Ben's even trying to maybe fight for a rotation spot at this point. But with all that, it was really great to see that the bench has the ability to score when they need to. Business is booming in Boston, everybody. <laughs> Look out. Celtics are 4-0. As Vinny said, on pace to be 82-0. Who knows? It might happen. Maybe maybe we break the Warriors' <laughs> win record. 73-9. and I mean, it's possible. Who knows? We could, we could break it. We could, bre- we could break it. But that's going to be all for today's episode of Celtics Catch-Up. We'll be back next week reviewing more of the Celtics games. And who knows? Maybe we'll maybe we'll switch things up. Maybe we'll come with something new for next episode. Who knows? But that's all for now. Brady and Vinny signing off. Go Celtics.